Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start an FTB Sky Adventure server. Now this is basically like Sky Block in many ways, and specifically Sky Factory, except this is quest based and it's more of an adventure mod pack and thus ftb sky adventures so you start off on an island in the sky but then you have quests and things that get you out of that island in the sky and having fun it's overall a really really cool mod pack and i personally think it's one of the coolest sky adventure mod packs and adventure mod packs in general out there thus why not enjoy it with your friends so that's what i'm going to be teaching you how to do today now i will say that this is a server meant for just you and your friends and on top of that it is using your own computer's resources and so if you don't have at least an i7 6th generation processor or newer from intel and 16 gigabytes of ram in your computer don't even try this i personally cannot run a server and play this game on my computer with my i7 4770k processor because it just eats your processing power. That's why I recommend going with someone like Apex Minecraft Hosting at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Over there you can set up an FTB Sky Adventure server very quickly and very easily for less than $10 per month. They have an incredible system with one click mod pack installation and it'll take you less than five minutes to get your server up and running. Additionally, you don't have to port forward or do anything like that. All you have to do is install FTB Sky Adventures and click play. It's that simple. Apex takes care of running the server from start to finish for you. But anyway, if you do want to start this server yourself and you're okay with it using your own computer's resources you think your pc can handle it let's go ahead and jump on into it first and foremost we want to go to the second link down below and it will take you here this is the ftb sky adventures download page on curse forge here and what we want to do is over here on the right we want to scroll down or not scroll down but really just look over here on the right and then we see 1.12 server packs we want to click on this top one here and it will take us over to this page we then want to make sure that this does say server at the end of it you see that right there it says server Make sure it says server and then click on download. It will download in the bottom left. You may have to keep this file. And if you do, no problems, just click keep. Now we need to go ahead and download the Twitch app because the Twitch app is used for FTB Sky Adventures and you can also find it linked in the description down below. Click that and it will take you here. From here, just click on the big white download button here in the center of the page and the Twitch app will begin to download in the bottom left. Twitch app is how you install FTB Sky Adventures after all. Now, as you can see, FTB Sky Adventures is finishing up. So is the Twitch app. So if we go ahead and minimize our browser here. On our desktop, we have FTB Sky Adventures and the Twitch app. Yours may not be a zipped folder like this. It may be a stack of books or a 7-zip file or a WinRAR file. And if it is, no worries. Just leave it as is. You're good. However, if these aren't on your desktop, they're going to be in your downloads folder. To find that, click on the Windows icon on the top left for me. Probably in the bottom left for you. And it will take you here. Open up the start menu basically and then type in downloads you'll have a downloads folder right here FTB sky adventures and twitch will be in here drag these to your desktop just for use ease of use first and foremost let's go ahead and get FTB sky adventures installed with the twitch app to do that go ahead and double click on this twitch setup download we got it'll open up this handy installer click on install it'll go through install some things and then open up the twitch app for you now the thing is you're going to have to log into twitch i have already logged into twitch so it just puts me on the twitch home page however if you haven't logged into twitch yet go ahead go log into twitch and you'll be good to go it's just going to be the same twitch account you use on twitch.tv once you're here you want to click on mods in the top right and the menu bar see that it's not in the top right but it's in the top like the right side of the menu bar you see that mods tab click on that then it'll have minecraft here click on minecraft and then you have to actually click on a green install button in the bottom just click on that install button it'll install and then you'll be on this page then you want to click on browse all mod packs here and then type in a sky space adventures and then boom, there it is, FTB Sky Adventures. Click on install right here, this purple install button. Click on that, and it'll go ahead and get it installing. While that's installing, I will just move that like over here, kind of off the screen some, but you'll be able to see it installing. We can go ahead and start working on this, which is the FTB Sky Adventure zip folder we downloaded. Right click on that and click on extract all. Click on extract and it'll go ahead and get this extracted. Once this is done extracting, we'll open up a folder just automatically. By the way, if you get this issue, the internet connection was lost. Reconnecting, it will reconnect. Just give it a second. Don't worry about that. There we go. Reconnected and continue downloading. Perfectly fine. But there we go. The zip file has now extracted and it opens up this folder for us. We can delete the zip file we downloaded earlier originally. So go ahead, right click and delete that. Now we've got this folder here. 
Yes, we want to permanently delete it. Yes, so we've got this folder here. We've got this uh, folder on our desktop. If we open the folder on our desktop, we'll see it's the same folder we were just in. First and foremost, we want to go ahead and double click on FTB install.bat. It'll run and then close out. That's basically how it's designed to do. It's just installing all the FTB stuff it needs to install. There we go. It ran and it closed out. If you have any problems running that file or any problems running this next file, this server start.bat here, we go ahead and double click on that and it will go ahead and get this rocking and rolling. However, it will close out here in a second. Just let it fail here. Boom. There we go. Press any key to continue. But if it doesn't open, you have any issues like that. Oh, by the way, I pressed a key and it closed out of it. Don't worry. That's how I did that. But nevertheless, we, if, you, if it doesn't run, if it doesn't work, if there's an issue, all you want to do is go to the description down below and it'll take you here. You want to go to this link right here, which is how to download and install Java, right? It's this Right here, go here, go through this tutorial, download and install the Java JDK. Then you should be able to run the server start.bat and the FPTB install. If that doesn't work, then we're not done yet. Go to the description down below and find the jar fix. And then come here, download the jar fix, go through this tutorial, and it will get it all working for you. And overall, it'll just work great. So yeah, there you go. That's how you can do that. That's what you need to know to get that set up. And overall, now you'll be able to run your server start file. After you run your server start file, you'll see it fail out exactly like it did, and you'll have this eula.txt file. Go ahead and double click on that. It'll open in Notepad. You want to go to this eula right here, read it, make sure this server's not going to break it, and if it isn't, you can go eula equals false to eula equals true. T R U E exactly like that. ULA equals true. Go ahead and click file, save, and then we can finally double click on the server start.bat and it will start the server. Now, I'm going to go ahead, let this open up, and then we're going to stop the server. Yeah, I know, kind of sucks starting the server and then stopping it, but oh well. While that is kind of getting itself started up on the initial launch, we can also go ahead and click on play over here in the Twitch app. See, we can see this is no longer downloading, no longer doing anything, and we have a play button on FTB Sky Adventures. Click that play button and it will go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. You'll have to log in here with your default Minecraft Mojang account. Go ahead and do that. Once you're in game here, you want to click on these three lines right up here in the top right of the launcher. Click on launch options, and then you should have a profile right here called FTB Sky Adventures. Click on that, and then I'm going to change the resolution just so you guys can actually see what's going on later. You don't have to do that. And then we want to come down here to JVM Arguments. I would recommend updating this to at least 4,000 megabytes, but I'm actually going to do 6,000 megabytes. Go a little crazy there. About five and a half gigabytes of RAM being dedicated to this mod pack. Go ahead and click save. Back over here to news. Confirm this is FTB Sky Adventures down at the bottom. It is. Click on play and now that will open up for the first time. Mod packs take a very, very long time to open. They also take a very, very long time in the servers to start. So while these are opening, I'll just be sitting here and we'll be kind of waiting for them to get done opening, right? The first install and the first load up of a mod pack and of a server is going to have a lot of this. So did you see that over there? It moved too fast. But you see all that red? You're going to have a lot of red. You're going to have a lot of yellow. Don't freak out about that. Just let it keep running and it will run perfectly fine. Same thing over here. You might have this, this spinning circle of death. It might look like it's locked up and it's going to crash out. And if that happens, don't worry about it. Just let it sit and launch through and it will work. You may have a crash. And if it does crash, just add more RAM. Add more RAM like we just did. I upped it to six gigabytes of RAM or well, 5.3 gigabytes of RAM. You will need to upgrade your RAM if you do have a crash. That is 99% of the time the issue. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead, let this finish up like starting up over here, I'll let this finish starting up over here, and I'll see you once it's all done. And actually, look at that. I can't I can't do a jump cut. It's not letting me because if we come over here, we can see that Forge Mod Loader detecting missing or unknown registries. There are two missing registries in this save. Oh no! Yada yada, this is not as bad as it sounds. Just type slash FML confirm, which means Forge Mod Loader confirm. So slash FML space confirm. It's also listed right here in the console. And hit enter. Then it's going to go through. It's going to ask you to do it again. Slash FML space confirm hit enter and then again it's going to go through and look like it's airing out and doing all sorts of stuff that's bad but it's okay it's supposed to do that and it will continue loading up and launching the server i think finally though i'm going to be able to do a jump cut and i'll meet you whenever the server is started and there we go the server is now started and we can see that thomcraft stopping aurora thread dim that's what you're going to be seeing all this thomcraft stopping aurora stuff is what it will end whenever your server's finally set up now as i said we started the server and now we're going to stop it the reason we're 
doing that is because we just needed to get all the files loaded so we can add in our IP and port forward so our friends can join. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the Twitch launcher. We don't need that anymore. I am going to leave this up in the background, right? But we don't need that right away. What we do need is this file right here, this folder rather. And then we want to come up to the top left on my screen, probably in the bottom left on your screen. Click on that window icon here and then go ahead and type in CMD. Once you type in CMD, you'll see command prompt here. Click on that and then in the command prompt, type IP. C O N F I G. IP config exactly like that, all one word. Don't change anything about it and hit enter. And then once we hit enter, we'll get some information here. As we can see, we have an IPv4 address and a default gateway. For our IPv4 address and default gateway, we want to write them down, whether it be on a sticky note, whether it be just on a piece of paper, whether it be typing them into your phone. You just need these moving forward with the tutorial. You can also keep the command prompt open here, whatever you want to do, but we will need these later. First, though, we will need the IPv4 address, and we're going to use it over here in the server.properties file. If you go ahead and double click on the server.properties file, it'll open in Notepad for me, but for you, you'll probably have to select Notepad to open it with, right? If you get that like open with what program you use, just click on Notepad and it'll work. Work. Once this is open here, we want to find our server-ip, right here it is, and in server-ip, right next to it, we want to type our IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.123, right like that. And as we can see, those do match up, IPv4 address over here, IPv4 address over here. Go ahead and click File, Save on the server.properties file, and now let's port forward. So we want to take our default gateway here, which is 192.168.1.1 for me. It's probably completely different for you, so is your IPv4 address by the way they're probably both completely different but take your default gateway come up to your browser up here and then you want to go ahead and enter into your browser your default gateway so in my case that is 192.168.1.1 and hit enter they will go ahead and open up something like this for you but most likely it will look completely different to what you see here the only similarity is that it will be a login box as simple as that. So once you've found that login box, what do you enter in there? Well, you enter your router's username and password. This is different from your Wi-Fi password and all that, and you can find your router's username and password at this link in the description. Now, I will say, Minecraft is open, and it's being rather loud, so let me go ahead and turn off the music. Hopefully, it didn't burst your eardrums there. And if it did, I'm sorry. Basically, what I said is you'll land on a page that has a login box on it like this, and then you want to go to this link in the description down below on how to find your router's password right here, right? So if we come here, we can see how to find your router's password, method one, method two, go through all of these methods, and you'll find your router's password. It is worth mentioning, you don't have to do any of this on Apex Minecraft hosting. First link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex modded. No port forwarding, none of this hard stuff. Quick and easy, they handle every single part of server management for you. But nevertheless, once you've found your router's password, we can come back to here, enter it in, and get rocking and rolling. So let me go ahead and log into my router, and I will see you once I have. There we go. We are now logging into our router here. As you can see, waiting, waiting, but logging on in. And most likely, this will again look completely different for you. And if it does, don't freak out. We, of course, have another tutorial on it. This is how to port forward on your router. This video right here walks you through everything that you need to know on the most popular routers out there, right? We go through all the most popular routers out there right now and show you how to port forward on them. I'm also going to be giving you tons of different names in this video. So if you are kind of wondering what's going on and, and you, you can't find it exactly in this video, like this port forwarding video, just listen in this video. And you'll be able to find most likely what your port forwarding is named. So for us, if we come over here back to our Linksys router, we will be able to go into security. Now for you, it might not be in security. It might be in apps and gaming. It might be in advanced advanced. It might be in NAT gaming. It might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It might be in NAT port forwarding. It might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It might just be called port forwarding. It might be called single port forwarding. It could also be an advanced. It could be an advanced and then advanced again. That's what it is on Netgear routers. It could also be an admin or administration and then advanced. But basically what we're looking for here is port forwarding. For me, I'm going to be going into security. And then, as I said, it could be called apps and gaming. And in my case, it is called apps and gaming. And then I had to go on to single port forwarding, right? So there we go, single port forwarding. And here, this is where we want to port forward. Now, for me, I have to click add a new single port forward. You might just have a list of empty boxes. If that's the case, that's perfectly fine. Now, for ID or name or identification, basically what this is going to be is just a thing for you. So you know what this port is forwarded for. And in my case, I'm just going to put Minecraft there. I would do the same for you. For anything involving port, your external port or your internal port, your outside port or your inside port, port one or port two, whatever it says for port, if it mentions port at all, put two 
5565. So external port 25565, right? For our internal port or outside port or whatever it says for you for port, put 25565. For our protocol, we're going to be doing both, or we're going to be doing TCP slash UDP, or UDP slash TCP, whatever we do, we want to make sure both protocols are selected. If you can't select both at the same time, just port forward twice, one for TCP and one for UDP. For our device IP, or internal IP, or your just overall device, this is going to be your IPv4 address that we found over here. In my case, 192.168.1.123. Now yours may just be a list of devices. If that's the case, select your computer as that device. Now at this point, most people can save and they're done port forwarding. However, if your port forward does mention an external IP, we're gonna need that no matter what, so I'm gonna show you how to get it right now. However, for me, I can go ahead and click save, click apply, and our port forward is done. Now, if yours mentions external IP though, what we wanna do is come over here to the link in the description down below, and that is whatsmyipaddress.com. Now, there's black boxes on your screen. The only thing you can see here is the last three digits of my IP, and that's why this is for your friends and family. Someone with your IP address can find out where you live. They can find out so much about you, and you can actually see the information they can find out over here. So that's why it's so important to just keep this IP private, and that's why mine is blocked out except for these last Last three digits. I am going good to go ahead and copy that though. And if we needed our IPv4, and if we needed our external IP over here, we would go ahead and paste that into our port forward, click apply, click OK, and we're done. Now, if we minimize our browser here, we can go ahead and start the server by double clicking on our server folder over here, and then clicking on the start server or server start dot bat right there so double click on that and it will start the server up guys it's over the hard part is over all we need to do now is wait for our server to set up we've already got ftb sky adventures open so we're just waiting for the server to set up i will see you once it's done something else worth mentioning here by the way is you don't have to do that fml confirm thing you only have to do that one time now the server is going to start no matter what it will still take a long time to start up but you'll notice there's less errors there's still errors there's some going on right now but it will take a lot less errors and it'll be quicker than it originally was anyway i will go ahead and see you once it's started and there we go as we mentioned earlier whenever you see stopping Aurora over here from Thomcraft. The server is set up. Now all we need to do is click on multiplayer. We could add this as a server, but really and truly we're just going to click direct connect down here and then we can paste our public IP address right here. Now again, you can only see the last three digits. It's the same last three digits which we saw earlier because I just want to make sure you know it's the same IP we had earlier, but again, don't want to show you the entire thing because you don't want someone to have your IP address. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on join server here and just like that it will launch us on into our server we'll be able to see over here right there it is that's us logging in all of those like things happening and we can see that we are in fact logging in over here as well and just like that it will throw us on into the mod pack the first time you log in by the way it's going to take a while I might be lagging, my voice might be a little choppy right now, and the reason it is is because, like I said, I can't even run this server on my PC, especially while I'm recording. But I don't think there's any doubt that we are, in fact, loaded in here. Welcome to FTB Sky Adventures Multiplayer. Simpli simply use FTBU to create a team, so on and so forth. A super fun thing and a super fun setup here. We've got our quest book. We've got everything that we need to do to get rocking and rolling. Nevertheless, guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your FTB Sky Adventure server. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And if your friends are having trouble joining your server, I almost guarantee that it is an issue with your port forward or there is a firewall either on your router or on your PC blocking them. It could also be your antivirus on your PC. Those are where you need to look. And if you work all that out, that will fix it. But nevertheless, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, give it a thumbs up if it helped. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on Forge when 1.13 comes out and on mod packs and Minecraft servers. Until then, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I am out. Peace.